Minneapolis airport plane spotter streamed the emergency landing live. My picture from that Delta flight that we talked about earlier from Salt Lake to Amsterdam that hit extremely violent turbulence. Ambulances lined up for dozens of patients after the Delta jumbo jet hit extreme turbulence over Wyoming. Recently, a Delta A330 aircraft experienced severe turbulence en route from Salt Lake City to Amsterdam. What happens when a large airliner experiences experiences severe turbulence. Let's watch. Minneapolis Delta 567 is emergency aircraft. We're at 11.5, sending a 10,000. Okay, the main player here is Delta 56. Uh, like I said, they're en route from Salt Lake City to Amsterdam. They're very heavy because they've got a long flight ahead of them and they experience severe turbulence. Now, what is severe turbulence exactly? Well, there's three different levels that we're trained in at the airlines. One is light turbulence. That's the one that most of us experience when we fly on a routine flight. No big deal, your drink doesn't even spill. Moderate turbulence is when your drink starts to slosh out of the cup a little bit and you you want to grab it before it falls off the tray table. Very uncomfortable feeling. Severe turbulence are to be avoided at all costs. Uh, we don't dispatch through severe turbulence. We don't try to fly through severe turbulence. We are updating our weather applications all the time on my iPad to make sure that we don't fly through severe turbulence. And any pilot that gets anywhere close to severe turbulence makes a pilot report to let all the other pilots know to avoid that area. All that being said, Delta flew through severe turbulence and some people got hurt. Let's follow along. Delta 56 at Minneapolis approach, runway 1 2 right. Expecting runway 1 2 right, proceeding direct at this time. Okay, so they're on their way now to Amsterdam. They divert into Minneapolis. Uh, they're at 37,000 feet, they're about 150 miles. I don't know, northeast, I guess you would say, of St. Louis or Salt Lake City, excuse me, when the aircraft encountered uh, severe turbulence, 25 people were injured altogether. I'll talk about how those 25 people got hurt here in just a minute. Delta 567, do you know your gate? Gate Gulf 3, Delta 567. Delta 56 Tower says that Gulf 3 gate is full, so you might want to talk with your company. Interestingly, as you've listened to incidents and accidents on this channel, you, you get a feel for how air traffic controllers will start to gather information. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Some of it do it right from where the incident is forward. Some of them go all the way to the end and work their way backwards. That's what this controller is doing. He's already at the gate and says, hey, your gate is occupied. Okay, uh, we'll take care of that. You know what? For this crew, that's probably the least of their concerns right now is whether the gate's open or not. But they can certainly send a message to dispatch to say, make sure the gate is open. They'll resolve that here before the end of the video. But that's how this air traffic controller is deciding to do it. He's going to work backwards from the gate to this airplane. He's going to ask him for all the normal information as they declare an emergency. Delta 56, Heavy, can you give me total passenger count and fuel remaining? Very common, right? They always ask that. Delta 56, passenger count, two five hundred souls on board, and uh, fuel remaining is uh, uh, 10 hours. You said 259 for the total? Mm -hmm. That is permanent for uh, passengers on board. Okay, now. Listen to that very carefully. If you're savvy to how this is usually worded, uh, he asked him for how many people were on board. He gives it in terms of souls on board, which is the standard way that we give how many people total are on board. Then at the end, Delta says passengers on board. So he gives him one number, 259. He says souls on board. And now there's some confusion because he ends it with, that's how many passengers are on board. They're gonna clarify that here in a little bit. You're gonna find out that there's two different numbers. That's why we use the expression souls on board. That is total people, passenger, crew, jump seaters, children, infants, any human being on that airplane is counted on souls on board. And, and the, the Delta pilot just confused that by saying passengers at the end. Thanks, Delta 567, just gotta maintain 7,000. They're starting their descent down to Minneapolis. Medical, arriving at gate call three at approximately 1950, five zero hours for up to seven people injured from 
severe turbulence, one individual reporting broken leg and fractured ribs. So now you're listening to the, the ground reporting. The um, ARF, as we know them, the airport rescue and firefighters have to get prepared for this airplane to come in. Usually the communication is from a ground controller or the tower controller to the ARF chief to say, start the trucks rolling, get in position. I'm going to tell you when the aircraft is next. So they don't know who it is exactly, but as soon as they say that airplane that's landing right now, that's your emergency aircraft. Then they'll all get in a position. They'll let that airplane land and roll out. They'll follow in behind them on the runway. If that airplane stops on the runway, then they will circle that airplane, take a look and make sure the airplane's okay. If they taxi off, they'll follow them off the taxiway and do the exact same thing. So that communication is getting taken care of while they're on their way in uh, with injuries on this aircraft. <laughs> Delta 56 Heavy, cut approach 126.105. 126 fire 5, Delta 56 Heavy. Switching off to the normal frequencies as they get closer to the airport. Approach Delta 56 Heavy is uh, with the first of the aircraft with you 9,300, sending 7,000, direct to SE. Delta 56 Heavy, many approach, just trying to maintain 6 cells. And we'll be right back, but first a word from our sponsor, Henson Shaving. So here's the thing, when you're a pilot, you have to stay clean shaven, and it's not about looking sharp, it's about the oxygen mask sealing to your face. No beard equals more breathability, which means I shave a lot. And for years, that meant, well, irritation, razor burn, uh, and wondering why I was spending 20 bucks on a plastic cartridge that felt like dragging a cheese grater across my face, mm -mm. this face. Then I found the Henson razor. And I'm not exaggerating when I say it's the first time I've actually enjoyed shaving. Uh, it's built in a precision aerospace machine shop. Yeah, actually aerospace like Mars Rover parts. The blade sticks out 13 10 thousandth of an inch. Say that five times fast. That's less than a human hair. Translation, it shaves super close without shredding your skin. Watch. Mm. Nice. You use a standard double-aged blades, like 10 cents each. They're recyclable, no gimmicks, no overpaid subscriptions, just solid engineering and smooth skin. Oh, and Henson's backing it all with real medical imaging research. They're actually measuring how much less irritation their razor causes compared to those drugstore multi-blades. So yeah, if shaving is something you have to do, <laughs> might as well stop hating it. Hit the link in the description for a special offer and give your face a break. And a special thanks to Henson. Sponsors like this help us to make more content for you. Okay, down to 6,000. Delta 5, 6 Heavy, they're wanting to know if the 259 number for total passengers includes crew. Okay, that's exact, that question right there is exactly why you always give it in souls on board, which is the total number of people, and you don't confuse it by saying passengers. So now the whisper down the lane is, was it 259 passengers? or 259 total people on board. Because at the end of the day, the the uh, firefighters that are gonna meet that airplane wanna know exactly how many human beings are on that airplane. You might say, why don't you say it that way? Well, you could ask it that way, but the traditional way from, from maritime shipping way back in the day was souls on board. That's 270 souls on board, Delta 5-6. Ah, it's a different number. He gave 259, and he said total souls on board. Then he said 259 passengers. It ends up that there's 270 souls on board. He didn't include the crew, so that was a good clarifying question on the part of air traffic control. He said total number of souls? Uh, it's the, uh, with the crew on board, 270 souls on board. Okay. Thank you. Now we've got that straightened out. Whew. Oh, yeah, overweight passed on final. We're looking at a fixed speed of 153 knots, which is uh, fairly close to normal. Thank you. All right, he's giving him good information Delta here. Delta 5, 6 heavy, we're just going to maintain 4,000 now. One, two miles from Zesty, cross Zesty, 4,000. Clear dial, I one, two, right approach. Zesty at four, clear dial, I one, two, right approach, Delta 5, 6. Okay, all the Delta checklists five, are done. Delta 5, 6 heavy, maintain two on the runoff to greater as long as crash. So let me know when you need the 12. 
Potentially need to slow. Don't five six. Uh, Going to get him in in a hurry because he knows there's injuries on board and these people need to get to the doctor. About five six. Uh, we have confirmation from our company that they are pushing Gulf three, gate Gulf three at this time. Double five six. Henry, thank you. Probably going to clear him right straight to the gate as soon as they check out the aircraft. And, uh, we're slowing at this time uh, for uh, commencing the pressure. So the 5 6 heavy Roger, maintain 1 7 0 knots or greater until 10 is available. No, he's going to intercept final. And uh, Delta 5 6, we'd like to go to tower for uh, wind check. So the 5 heavy contact tower 126.7, good night. Right, making a right turn on the final. final. Getting the aircraft configured with the flaps and the gear at this time. We are assessing for one way, one, two, right, wind check. Bermuda 56, Minneapolis Tower, winds currently 04012, gust 20, traffic holds in position. Runway 12 right, clear to land. Okay, now why did he ask him for a wind check? That's very important. If you look at the wind direction and the gust, it's coming from 040, but they're landing on runway 12. That's 80 knots off the left side. So I'm going to have to compensate for that as a pilot. I'm going to have to put a little wing down and top rudder to counteract that as I'm, as I'm coming in. But I want to know... 20 knots, that's a pretty good crosswind. So it's going to be a little bit of a tricky, challenging landing as they come in. It's good to know that stuff ahead of time. That's why he asked. Clear the land runway one to right, Delta 5. And Captain, I think it was, was it 1-5, Captain 1-5, the next to land is the emergency. She's now communicating with the fire chief that the next aircraft to land is the emergency aircraft. Guess a thumbs up. Captain 5, thumbs up. So 2145, flighting 120, runway 12 right, clear for takeoff. 120, clear for takeoff, 12 right, Delta 2149. Ice Air 656, map tower, be ready to go, runway 12 right, line up and wait, traffic, so six mile final of the heavy So they still are conducting they business, right? There's still people taking off from that runway. Okay, line up and wait, runway 12 right. Sorry, the airplane, airport doesn't stop operating just because there's an emergency on the way in. Okay, here he comes. Uh, now finally on for 12 right. You can see actual footage of the aircraft now. So there's really nothing wrong with the airplane. Uh, there's just injured passengers on board. Even through severe turbulence, there's nothing wrong with the airplane. So the question is, now he rolls out fire truck is going to proceed onto the runway. They're going to follow him off onto a taxiway. They're going to take a look at the airplane to make sure it's okay. That takes 30 seconds. Then that airplane is going to continue to taxi to that gate Gulf 3 because they want to get there as quickly as they can to get these people medical attention. Hopefully the paramedics now are, are all there waiting. Ambulances are waiting as well to take these people off the airplane. Uh, there are 25 total injuries. How does that happen? Well, again, I turn that seatbelt sign on all the time. Now, I don't leave it on all the time, but when I need to have it on, I turn it on. And if you're back there and you don't look at it or you don't care about it or you just don't want that seatbelt fastened, you're taking a lot of risk. I can't always predict bumpy air. And in a situation like this, they're having a completely normal day and then whack, they get hit by severe turbulence. I had one episode in my all my years of flying at the airline where we took people to the hospital because of turbulence, and it was a total surprise. We were going through kind of light turbulence from uh, Miami to uh, Milan. We were hugging the east coast of the U.S. on the way up to Canada, and uh, we, uh, we started to experience some moderate turbulence where your drink is sloshing around. I made a PA to the passengers and the flight attendants. I said, I want everybody to take a seat. Right now, I've turned the seatbelt sign on. I want you to return to your seat and make sure your seatbelt is fastened. That wasn't the automated one that they normally get. That was directly from me as well. If you hear from the captain and the captain makes that PA, folks, click your seatbelt. I don't know why you don't, uh, because the inside of the airplane is dangerous to you if you come flying out of that seat. So we're, we're just flying along normally. About 20 minutes later after I made that announcement, we hit nine seconds worth of severe turbulence. 
in that nine seconds of severe turbulence, and I'll throw you up a picture right here uh, to take a look. That's I took that picture after we landed. Uh, it was uh, the aft galley of the airplane. All of that stuff and debris that you see all over the floor, that was all neatly tucked away, and all of the latches were closed to hold it in place. That's how severely the back of that airplane shook. With that being said, Seven people total on my flight came flying out of their seats and landed somewhere on the airplane in that nine seconds. There were fortunately no broken bones. One lady did cut her um, kind of back of her leg pretty severely. Um, we had physicians on board. They were able to get the bleeding stopped. That was the good news for her. Four of those people were passengers that just simply refused to click their seatbelt, even though I told them and the seatbelt sign was on. And three of them were flight attendants that didn't have their seatbelt fastened. Hmm. And I had told them to take a seat and they just sat in their seat and they didn't fasten their seatbelt. So again, you got to take responsibility for yourself in a situation like that. If you're in moderate turbulence, make sure that that seatbelt is fastened. If the captain comes on and says, do it, absolutely do it. So 25 people got injured here. I think four or five Kind of seriously, there were some broken bones in this one, uh, and they were carted off to the hospital. Everybody was stabilized and did well after that. But again, it's not an episode that you want to go through, nor I want to go through. So can these things happen? Yes, they do. Do they happen all the time? Eh, it's pretty rare. Um, I think the incidence of severe turbulence accidents and incidents has really kind of plummeted over the years, even though when it does make the news, it makes the news in a big way. And we all think, oh, this is it's terrible. It's happening all over the place. It's not happening as much as it used to, but you don't want to have it happen to you, and nor do I. I have to tell you, I felt really bad that anybody on my flight got hurt. It bothered me a lot. I did everything I could short of going back and fastening everybody's seatbelt. But as you know, there are some people that simply refuse to buckle that seatbelt. I have no idea why. But again, you're the first person it's going to get carted off in an ambulance. If you don't, that's the potential. Well, this is it, folks. You saw this incident. Hopefully we don't have any more uh, this year to report on for severe turbulence. And now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.